Hello and welcome to Backcountry. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favourite cars. It's me, Hunter S. Thompson. And, uh, yeah, I can't keep this charade going. So today we're going to be talking about the 1973 Chevrolet Caprice, which featured in the hit movie, well, it was a flop at the time, but cult hit, the Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas film with Benicio Del Toro and, of course, Johnny Depp and the very, very frightened-looking Tobey Maguire. And we're going to be talking about that car, that beautiful car, straight after this. Hey everybody, today's episode of Jason Hassett's The Car Nerd is brought to you by the wonderful Crate Joy. These guys have selections and just hundreds and hundreds of different crates that you can get delivered every month with your favorite types of things. You can either Mitch, Mitch, Con, Mitch McConnell and match, or you can just mix and match any of these boxes that you want, or you can go with some of their fabulous selections. And I know how much my fellow car amigos like to enjoy their cigars, their beers, uh, their sauces for making those precious barbecues. You can find them all. You can also find some sexier stuff for you and the missus. And it has stuff for everybody. So there's everything from pets uh, to toys, lingerie, cigars, everything. Definitely check out Crate Joy and thank you so much to them and to you for supporting us as we go forward. You'll find the link in the description or you can use bit.ly slash CrateJoy2020. And now back to the episode. So if you're a fan of the movie, you're probably well aware of the red caprice that featured in the film. It was absolutely glorious. And this car was actually the Chevrolet Caprice classic. It wasn't quite a Caprice, but we'll get into that in a moment. So in the movie, we see them set off for the Mint 400, which we went to cover in Las Vegas. Now, the reason for this was when the book was written by Hunter S. Thompson, that was still a thing, and he had gone to that, and, you know, like most of his books, it was somewhat based in his own reality. It was a drug-infused, alcohol-infused nightmare. However, the uh, Mint 400 had officially stopped by the time the movie came out, but thanks to General Tire, it was brought back a decade after the film in Las Vegas and still runs today, and it's a fantastic event if you ever get a chance to go. Now, getting into the Chevrolet Caprice itself, many people refer to it as the Impala, and even in the book, it was referred to as the Impala. And this is for good reason. It's because the 1968 and 69 version of the Impala that had the Caprice moniker was actually just the highest trim level. It was Chevrolet's ultimate land yacht. Peace out to my Sir Hoovy fans. And this car was massive. However, the car that it would repl- or that would replace it was even bigger. So as I said, the Caprice moniker went on their high-end luxury models, and they found that a lot of their customers really, really enjoyed this and would go for these cars over considerably more expensive cars like the Lincoln Continental. And in the early 70s, Chevrolet decided it was time to use the moniker to create an all-new car that would essentially be the Impala, but just the luxury edition, but separate it completely. And in 1973, the car that featured in the film is in fact this first Caprice and it was known as the Chevrolet Caprice Classic and it was the first time that the moniker was officially moved away from the Impala. To make things even crazier, this massive boat of a car which ran on lovely 70s air suspension which meant it actually drove like a boat um, was a two-door convertible which was absolutely bonkers. It doesn't make any sense at all. And then in 1974, Chevrolet finally removed it completely from the Impala by making the Chevrolet Caprice an all-new car. And this car was also found as a station wagon with four doors, which was a little less ridiculous than the two-door convertible. Now, as I've said, this car was massive. 
absolutely massive. In fact, it ran 221 inches. And if you don't know how big that is, that is actually 15 inches bigger than a Maybach. And the Maybach, if you haven't been in one, is also absolutely massive. In fact, this car sitting alongside some of the new Silverados would still be slightly bigger. And 15 inches, in case you haven't worked it out, is enough to fit three average male genitalia behind the car. The big problem that Chevrolet faced and the reason this car didn't live on for too long was in 1973, there was the famous and annoying oil crisis. Oh, man, that's lovely. Can I smoke on YouTube? No, I probably shouldn't. Um, so, sorry. So, and the main reason they struggled with the oil crisis was because of the engine choices inside the Caprice. This car featured two engine choices. Now, in the first year, it only featured one, and that dog is barking because he understands how ridiculous this was. The 6.6-liter .6 V8 dubbed the turbojet engine to harken back to Chevrolet's attempt to uh, bring out a turbine car. Um, ran just... A ridiculous level of consumption given it was a 1970s 6.6 .6 litre V8 and only produced a measly 150 brake horsepower. This was because emissions restrictions had come in and even though they had all of this distribution they still couldn't pump any more out. I can't imagine if anyone could sell a 6.6 .6 litre V8 today with only 150 horsepower. Now thankfully the year later they introduced the 7.7 .7 litre engine Engine, which I believe was dubbed the turbo fighter, but I, I can be corrected on that in the comments. Thank you very much. And this produced a massive 254 brake horsepower, which gave it some incredible performance hints. It got it from zero to 60 in only 13 seconds and it reached top speed of 99 miles an hour. Now, while those figures are laughable in today's perspective, they were also laughable in the 1970s. However, it was carrying a mid-size cruise ship um, in the form of the Chevrolet Caprice. However, having said all this, you can hit your mic. That's why you shouldn't drink whiskey when you're trying to make... Having said all this, I would still absolutely love one today. They are one of the coolest cars of all time just because of how outrageous they are. What they stand for is how ridiculous America is. When I was growing up in Ireland, our, America was the place where everything needed to be bigger, more powerful, more ridiculous. And this is exactly that. It is the biggest car Chevrolet had made at the time. And it's still the biggest car that they've ever made. Sure, they've made bigger SUVs. Um, you know, ridiculous SUVs, but this was the biggest one. And as I said, this is something that I'm sure Sir Hoovy would love in his garage. And it's just fantastic. And I completely understand why Hunter S. Thompson would feature it in his book because it's so outrageous. It's so outrageous that it really does fit the theme of that book. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe. I'm going to be doing videos now every Tuesday and Thursday. Apologies for the lack of them. It's been a crazy year. There's been some sort of pandemic which has made things quite difficult. So instead of trying to do five videos a week, I'm going to have to work on some other things um, and I'm only going to be able to do videos Tuesdays and Thursdays, which if you're watching right now, you're probably relieved. I've also cut my hair because I look like Trump and don't forget to vote tomorrow as well or today actually by the time this comes out. Again, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on Thursday.